In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers, my brothers and, sisters, and sisters that I, that have, I have greatly, greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, there's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came forward to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we have some great readings today. Our first reading is about the prophet Elijah, one of the greatest prophets of all of Israel. And Elijah is up on Mount Horeb in a cave trying to hear the voice of the Lord. I've been on these mountains in the Holy Land, and I was on one similar to Horeb called Mount Carmel. And on Mount Carmel, which is the same terrain as um, Mount Horeb, there's not much to see. I mean, yes, it's beautiful, the nature, the view, uh, but it's kind of like being a mountain on a mountain in Yakima. The mountain's not that big. Uh, there's a lot of bald spots on the mountain. There's some shrubs, you know, nothing special except the natural beauty. There was one thing on the mountain that caught my eye. There was a statue of the prophet Elijah, and he was holding a knife. And it was with that knife, he slit the throats of the prophets of Baal. But I thought to myself, wow. I mean, the Bible's not boring. There it is. He's got the knife, and he slit those throats. But Elijah is trying to hear the voice of the Lord. And we have this beautiful passage. The Lord was not in the earthquake. The Lord was not in the fire. The Lord was not in the wind. He was in the whisper. And I thought to myself, after being on these mountains, why did they mark these spots as so important? Because it is there that Elijah heard the whisper. And we marked it. Why? Because even a prophet as great as Elijah, one who rose someone from the dead, who called down fire from heaven and was taken up to heaven, divine chariot, even he struggled to hear the voice of the Lord, like all of us. But he heard the whisper, and we mark that day, because all of us struggle to hear the voice of the Lord. What Elijah teaches us is that sometimes we hear the voice in the struggle to hear the voice of the Lord. And we have to persist. It's that quiet voice in our heart of hearts that speaks to us almost in a profound and deep way, just like our conscience does. Our gospel reading today is the famous passage where Jesus walks on water. Now, he puts the disciples out into the boat, and he doesn't join them. He goes up on the mountain. Now, again, I've seen these mountains. I remember being in the Holy Land 
walking on top of them, looking down at Lake um, Galilee, thinking, okay, this is what Jesus saw when the disciples were out in the boats. And the mountains aren't much taller than the mountains around Yakima. They're not like Mount Rainier where they're thousands of feet tall and you're up in the clouds. And the point is that Jesus could see the, the apostles in the boat from where he was. And he left them there all night. It says Jesus didn't come to the fourth watch of the night, which is the watch right before dawn. They would divide the night up into four watches. So these guys are fishing all night. They're in a storm. They're wondering what's going to happen. And where did Jesus go? He just went to go hang out with God and left them here? Okay. So what is Jesus doing? Well, Jesus' actions remind me of the ancient rituals of masculine initiation. In the ancient rituals, they would take a boy out into the woods at night, and it's dark, and there's trees, and it's scary. And they tell the boy, hey, if you can make it home, you're a man. Now, the boy doesn't know this, but his father is hiding in the bushes not far off, keeping an eye on him. So although he feels alone, his father is not going to let him out of his sight. This is what's happening with the apostles. They're in a jam, they're afraid, but Jesus is right there on the mountain. He's watching them. And then he comes out to them on the water. This is a beautiful image, because water in the ancient world was a symbol of chaos. And here we have God in Christ walking on the chaos, ordering it, conquering it. And Peter, so impetuous as always, sees Jesus on the water. I'm coming! And he jumps out of the boat, starts walking on water, but of course he becomes afraid and he begins to sink. Of course, Peter is us, right? When the waters of life are overwhelming us, we begin to sink, we begin to doubt, we begin to be afraid. Yet all we have to do is look to Jesus, and in an instant, he can stop everything. He can calm the waters of chaos of our lives. He can bring us into the boat. He can take us back to safety on the shore. It only takes an instant. That's what really jumps out to me from this reading, is that if I was Peter, I would think I'd come to the end. But for Jesus, it's no big thing. Yeah, I'm walking on water. I'll save your life. I'll save the rest of humanity while I'm at it. Which means all we have to do is really, really trust him, which is hard to do when you're sinking beneath the waves. But there's this beautiful line. St. Peter cries out, Lord, save me. And that's our prayer. That's our prayer, especially during this difficult time in the world, during the COVID virus, during the riots, during the burning of Bibles in our country, in, our country, in Portland. Maybe all we can do at this time is cry out, Lord, save us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has has spoken spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring all of our prayers, all of our needs and desires before the Lord. For church leaders, ordained and lay, for a spirit of reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this nation and every nation, for progress toward peace through justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the working poor, the elderly, and the homeless, for a living wage, good medical care, and a safe environment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have lost a loved one, for children who have lost parents, for husbands and wives who have lost their spouses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all present at the Lord's table in our parishes, in our diocese, and for all who cannot be here because of age or illness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask you to hear these prayers and all the unspoken prayers that reside in the silence of our own hearts. We ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his Catholic Church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in you all things may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new an eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep, in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy Lord, that you, you should enter, enter under my life, roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Just send the earth. 
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Diocese of Yakima. I've been a seminarian now for, well, I'm entering my seventh year, and this is my final year. Uh, just about a month and a half ago, I was ordained to the transitional diaconate, the last step before ordination to the priesthood. So first of all, thank you all very much for the support that you've given to me and to my brothers throughout the years. Uh, it really does mean a lot to us. Originally, I'm from Kennewick, my family still lives there. We were parishioners for many years at Holy Spirit Parish. It was actually there that my vocation started. I was going there with my family, kind of minding, minding my own business. Uh, and then one day, Monsignor Perrin Ave tells me about this camp called Quo Vadis Days that they have every summer in the diocese. It's put on by seminarians. It's up in the mountains. It's a lot of fun. He thinks I should go. Well, I was 14 at the time, it sounded like fun. I didn't have a good reason to say no, so I said yes. I went to the camp, there were talks about discernment, talks about the priesthood, and there at that camp, at 14 years old, I experienced um, my, I, I hesitate there, because it's, it's tough to say exactly what I experienced at that camp. I experienced something. I know I experienced something, but I wasn't really quite sure what I experienced at that first, that first discernment retreat. I knew God was trying to tell me something, that was clear, but I really had no idea what it was. Well, throughout high school, I kept working with priests, working with Monsignor Ave, questions, um, asking lots of questions about the priesthood, and very slowly I started to discover, okay, I, I think, I think I know what God was trying to tell me. I think I know what God is trying to tell me. And by the time I got to the end of high school, I was suspicious enough that God was calling me to be a priest that I decided to enter seminary. And each year was sufficiently confirming in that call that I decided to go on to the next year. It was a very slowly, very slowly evolving thing until, well, now here I am in the last year. I'm. I'm as sure as I can be that God's calling me to be a priest, and 
And honestly, I'm very, very excited to be a priest here in the Diocese of Yakima. I've really enjoyed um, taking classes at seminary, learning uh, the practice of how to be a priest, learning the theology of the church. Uh, I also enjoy my time in the diocese over the summer where I go out uh, to, to be with the people, to see what their lives are like. I've gone out to the fields to pick fruit. I've worked inside parish offices to kind of learn that. And just everything that I do and every step that I take that brings me closer to being a priest uh, really just makes me more excited to be one. So thank you very much for your support. Without your spiritual support by way of prayers and your financial support by way of donations, it would be really impossible for me to be on this path. Um, so thanks to, to all of you. And well, you might be seeing me sometime in the near future and calling me by a different name, Father Michael Kelly. Thanks and God bless.